Hello my friends, welcome back. We are in a different filming spot today. I apologize, the lighting is way off. I will try to fix it in editing, but you gotta strike when the iron's hot, when you're a new mom and you work from home and all of this stuff. Today I have a video that wasn't requested, but kind of was requested. Kind of was requested. Different spot, still can't speak. I did have a case that was requested for me to talk about from a couple of people. I promised the person who I told I will not use her name yet until she tells me I can, that I wouldn't talk about the video that she requested until the case is finished being tried. It's going on, it's in trial. She, the, the suspect is on trial right now. That was really hard to say. When I was researching the case that she recommended that I talk about, I found so many other cases that are very similar. I wanted to start with the first one that I could find that started this ball rolling, I guess, or I don't know if it was just all of these disjointed ones, but you know how like school shootings have become a thing now? And the first one that at least I can remember is Columbine. It's kind of the same situation. These are cases of pregnant women who get their life taken from them, but also get the baby taken from them. Civilians decide that they're gonna do their own C-section for whatever reason they decide that they need to take one from somebody's belly. Ugh. This was the very first one that I was able to find and it happened in New Mexico in the 80s. So Before that, I just want to say I did ask you guys if you wanted me to cover more of the Lucy Let Be trial. I said, I was saying it like Let Be with my awful accent. So it was coming out like L-E-P, but it's L-E-T. B-Y, I believe, and it's a six month trial. They're going through each baby week by week. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will link the video up there in the cards or down in the description box below. But every week is kind of a lot because even like last week's, a lot of the details were the exact same scenarios. It was a lot of the same details, just on a different baby as the first three weeks of trial that I covered already. But I'm figuring if we do once a month for a six month trial, that's gonna be six separate videos. That's probably plenty to keep us all caught up and to make the details really stand out for us. This is the case of Darcy Pierce. Darcy was obsessed with becoming a mother and she would go to any length that she possibly could to have a baby. This started way, way, way back from the time that she was an adolescent preteen, teenager. It was constant. It's all she ever thought about. It's all she ever talked about. And she would do anything and go to any length that she possibly could to become a mother or have a baby. Her husband said, and then one of the investigators on her case said, Darcy got what she wanted, no matter what the cost. She would go to any length to get whatever it was that she wanted. When she was 19 years old, Darcy married a man named Ray and Ray was in the Air Force. In March of 1986, Darcy told Ray that she had become pregnant. However, her whole entire pregnancy was a lie. She made the whole thing up and this wasn't the first time she did this. She had a history of telling people that she was pregnant when she wasn't. She needed that attention. That was her laser focus, tunnel vision. All she wanted to be was a mom and to be recognized as a mother. And she went very far on a few occasions when she wasn't pregnant to say that she was just so she could get that attention on her. And let me tell you, I know this from when I was pregnant, the attention you get is very different than anything you'll ever experience in your whole entire life. You get some serious attention and it's so sweet. It really does bring out kindness in people. And so I could understand why she wanted that, but like not to the point where you make it up. Either you are pregnant or you're not. In Darcy's case though, even the times where she made believe she was pregnant, she was ridiculously convincing to the point where she learned how to flex her ab muscles in a way where it felt like a baby was kicking. So not only did her parents get to feel her belly and her mom who had multiple children told them like, I saw her belly. That was the belly of a pregnant woman. Her father felt her belly moving, but the OBGYN who interviewed her later after she had been charged was like, honestly, I felt her belly and it felt like a baby was in there moving. Oh, hidden talent, I guess. Yuck. According to that OBGYN, I'm laughing because she said it was very impressive. And I'm like, mm, minus the 
you know, extenuating circumstances around it, of course. But I mean, I guess if your ab muscles are that strong. This strange need for making up pregnancies started when she was a very little girl. And a background, Darcy was born in Oregon and she was adopted when she was only 11 days old. Her adoptive parents were lovely. They adored her. They gave her everything she wanted. If she wanted it, Darcy got it. And I think they tried to probably make up for what they thought that she was missing. No matter what, no matter how much they loved her, Darcy still had these negative feelings towards her adoptive parents. She always felt this abandonment from her biological mother and she didn't understand why her mother didn't want her. She wanted a baby so she could love that baby in the way that she felt that her biological mother should have loved her. Kind of like to make up for that but at the same time when she was a young girl earlier than 11 years old she would have fantasies of killing her adopted mother. She hated her. She hated both her parents, her adoptive parents and this continued like these fantasies of killing specifically her adoptive mother lasted until her adult years. We learned later that Darcy was S-A'd at a very young age. She was six years old when she started to have an intimate relationship with her seven-year-old cousin. And this lasted for many years. And according to Darcy, at that young age, so six years old, she would stuff her belly with pillows and she would make believe she was pregnant. So back to Darcy and Ray. In 1985, they were not married, but they were living together. Darcy wound up actually getting pregnant. So she really had a pregnancy this time, but unfortunately, the pregnancy didn't take. It's called a molar pregnancy. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right but it's spelled just like the tooth like a molar and what happens is the egg gets fertilized but it stops there no baby develops from that fertilized egg obviously there's no baby and the who was obsessed with having a baby was finally really going to have a baby of her own and it never happened for her it never took so she became ridiculously depressed and she was angry in her opinion she's like Every woman can have a baby. There's something wrong with me. And she started turning on herself. But at that point, right, before she did any of the crazy stuff, just this point in the story, I can understand where she's coming from. This is the 1980s. There weren't really IVF treatments yet. There was no social media where people could go and talk about their struggles with infertility. So it makes sense that most women, especially very young women, 19 years old, would think that their body was broken and something was wrong with them. She actually said the words, why am I so deficient? And it's understandable that she would think that way. So for Darcy, this turned into a situation where she was already obsessed with it, but then it was like, you know when you want what you can't have, when you're on a diet and all you think about are cookies and pizza? Like she became ultra obsessed with this. She wanted something and she, there was no way that she could get it, at least in her head, she was broken. So she was insanely, like pathologically obsessed with this. So to add salt into Darcy's womb, her sister-in-law who lived next door had a baby. And when she would come over and visit and bring this brand new newborn baby, what? <laughs> That's a lot of words to say. When she would bring the brand new infant over to Darcy's house, Darcy was obsessed. She wouldn't put the baby down. And then she's like, listen, I'll come over anytime you want me to come over. You know what I'll do for you? Since we're both pregnant. Oh, I forgot this part. <laughs> she told her she was pregnant again. She told everyone she was pregnant again. She's like, you know, I'm pregnant. You just had a baby. You're tired. I'll come over and I will help nurse the baby for you. And the sister-in-law was completely taken back. She was so insulted and she was like, absolutely not, I'm good. <laughs> like I can take care of my own baby. And also from my experience, because I did have issues breastfeeding in the beginning, it's really like you, you put a lot on yourself. That is something where you're like, it sh just should be natural. And you don't realize that it's a lot more common to have issues with breastfeeding than not. So to have somebody when you're postpartum and all up in your feels with all those hormones going all over the place and then breastfeeding hormones on top of it, I can understand this poor woman's probably anger, feelings of like, I'm not good enough, stay away from my baby, my baby. Darcy was like, what? Like she honestly, in her mind, thought that this was such a sweet thing to offer, even though in her, she's the only person that knows that she's not pregnant and like, you might have a little bit of an issue there, but 
she's like, well, F that. I'm gonna kill this bitch. She's not taking me up on my offer. I'm just gonna kill her and I'm gonna steal her baby. But then she thinks about it again and she's like, okay, that's a bad idea because what if I get caught? Like, that will defeat the whole purpose. So at this point, she's working in a clothing store and just by happenstance, almost every single other woman that worked there was pregnant all at the same time. So of course Darcy's like, oh, me too, me too, I'm pregnant. They went as far as throwing Darcy a baby shower. They pitched in for her crib. They bought clothes for this baby. This lie is snowballing into a bigger lie and a bigger lie. So it comes to the point where Darcy's gonna need a baby. So eventually she had to get herself out of this mess. So she tells everybody, including Ray, she had a stillborn. It was very unfortunate. She got all the attention she wanted and got for being pregnant when she said that she had a stillborn. She even has a friend who recalled at trial being on the phone with her and they were both crying and helping her through this grieving process, having this stillborn baby that never existed. It's crazy. I think this woman actually started to believe her own lies, loved the attention that she was getting, that she kind of like lived into the lies, if that makes sense. She received flowers, she received sympathy gifts, she just received all the attention, which she was thriving on for a while, but then that fades and she was back to the task at hand where she's like, but what I really want is a baby and all of that attention that comes along with being pregnant and having one. Somehow in the middle of all this, Ray finds out that the pregnancy and the stillborn story were all just made up. It was all a lie. And he was pissed, understandably. I mean, he thought he was gonna be a dad and it was all a lie, plus he's married to this woman who is a cuckoo bird. Oh, she's petrified that she's gonna lose Ray. That's the last thing she wants. So she tells him, no, I'm pregnant again and I swear to you, this time it's not a lie. I promise you, I swear on our relationship. She swore up and down and she was so good and so convincing that Ray believed her. She's supposedly pregnant, he believes her. They make a plan, they quickly run off and get married and they move to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Remember, he's in the Air Force. She makes some friends with some Air Force wives or whomever is in the area. She brings them to Lamaze class with her when Ray's away with military stuff or he can't make it. She would go to dozens of different doctors and ask them for pregnancy tests. I think partly because she was dying to get a positive one, and then partly because she had to be going to pregnancy doctor's appointments, so she would never tell anybody that she got these results and they were always negative, even though she would tell the doctor, like, that's not true, you're wrong, and leave and go to a different one. But she would never tell the friends that. She would just be like, oh yeah, I had my appointment, everything's great with baby, developing fine, blah, blah, blah. I don't know why nobody ever went with her, she didn't have picture, I don't know. but. It's just what people believe. Maybe in the 80s, they didn't give you the ultrasound pictures. Who knows? By the time they had moved to New Mexico, she was already 10 months pregnant. I'm laughing. I, I know you're pregnant for 10 months, but like, <laughs> I do know. They say nine months, but I had a baby. I get it. I, I understand the math, but like, I don't understand her math because when were you gonna produce a baby when you're pregnant for 10 months? But at this point, she's like, all right, like, shit, I got off the pot. I need to have this baby at some point because Ray started in a question like, Sweetheart, the calendar is not adding up. Where's this baby? It's just in there cooking like a Thanksgiving turkey, you know, or are we waiting until November? Like what's going on? She's panicking, the pressure's on. She cannot admit that this is fake again because she knew at that point she would lose Ray forever. And she was as obsessed with keeping Ray as she was with having a baby. It was like a deal that went hand in hand. So she starts coming up with all these theories. She's gonna go to a grocery store and steal a baby. She was gonna go to hospital wards and take a baby. She didn't care, she just needed to get a baby. Now this was July of 1987. Not only did she develop this need to have a baby, to become a mother, to literally have a baby in her arms, she was equally as obsessed with convincing Ray and everybody else that she was not lying this time, she was trustworthy, this was actually true, all of it was not, but she became obsessed that way. So she's processing through all these ideas and she realizes I can't steal one from the hospital, I can't steal one from the grocery store because I just don't wanna get caught. The afternoon of July 23rd, 1987, she's just thinking about how she's gonna do this and she drives herself to the clinic, the OBGYN clinic, and she parks in the parking lot across the street and she's just watching people go in and out and she watches this woman, a visibly very pregnant woman, climb herself out of a red blazer truck 
and as this woman approaches the door of the clinic, she realizes she is the same eye color as her. She is the same hair color as her. They're about the same height, mm, similar-ish build, like enough that their babies would probably look similar. She could get away with her baby if she looked like her, looking like her. She does not have a plan, she just sits there and she watches and she waits. She waits the two hours while this woman is in her doctor's appointment. She sees her coming out and she's like, I know what I'll do. I'll just go up to her. I'll tell her I'm having a bad day, I'm in a bad situation, and I'm gonna convince her to give me her baby. Like she truly and genuinely believed she would talk this woman into handing over her baby because she was having a bad day. Okay. So she approaches the woman and they start talking. This woman's name is Cindy Ray. I know it's confusing because Darcy's husband is also named Ray. That's his first name, but this woman is Cindy. Her last name is Ray. She's married to a man named Sam Ray. Sam, first name, last name Ray. It sounded like his name was Sam Ray, but it's not Sam. His name's Sam. Darcy walks up to Cindy and she was like, oh, I'm having a very bad day. And Cindy like is taken aback. She looks startled. She's shocked. She's like, okay, like, why are you telling me? Darcy looks her in the eye and she's like, please, I just moved here. I have no one. I just need to talk. I'm not gonna hurt you. As they started talking, not only did they have their pregnancies in common, but they also had being military wives in common. And if you know anything about the military and military wives specifically, they're usually pretty tight knit. It's this subculture within our culture. They tend to stick together because they understand deployment and they understand moving around from base to base and not assignments. What's that called when you get assigned, I can't think of the, the proper terminology, but like to a different base and they, they just understand one another and they can bond that way. So they had that in common. Cindy was still kind of taken aback, but it helped her bring her guard down a little bit. So somehow during this exchange, Darcy convinces Cindy to get in her car with her. She still doesn't have a plan of what she's gonna do. They're going towards Darcy's house, but she sees that Ray's car is in the driveway as they pull on the street and they're approaching it and she flips out, does this like quick U-turn and starts driving east towards the mountains. They're in the desert of New Mexico. She doesn't know where she's going, but she's like, can't go home and just starts driving. She drives into the mountains and she just stops on this deserted road. Cindy is keeping calm because she wants to protect her unborn child. She wants to keep Darcy calm because she's petrified. According to Darcy, she was like, we were in the car and we fell out. The next thing I remember, she was scratching me and I don't remember anything else. What really happened was Darcy hit Cindy. There was a struggle. Cindy's clawing at her, trying to get her off of her. She just wanted to get away from her. While they're grappling, Darcy reaches her hand into Cindy's purse and she pulls out a strap and she strangled her with it. And then once she strangled her with it and she was unconscious, unconscious, she proceeded to cut the baby out of Cindy's belly. So I'm like, I'm reading this, right? And I'm like, how did this happen? What, she just had a knife somewhere? Like what happened? You guys, she used a key. Now, if you've ever used a key, like sometimes I'll use a key if I have a plastic piece of something, like one of the kids' toys that I need to open up, or you know, like you buy a pair of socks and you have that plastic thing, and it's hard, like it takes a couple of tries and a lot of elbow grease just to open that plastic. Imagine cutting through all of that tissue and skin, and she's basically giving this woman a C-section with a key. I know, gross, I'm sorry. She proceeds to push Cindy's lifeless body outside of the car, leaves her on the side of the road to die, takes off her dress, wraps the baby in it, puts the baby on her chest, struts back onto the road in her slip, puts the baby on the passenger seat, and she's driving past all these exits, which had hospitals at them, but she drives, drives, drives to a car dealership where her friend worked. And she tells her friend, oh my God, I just gave birth to my baby on the side of the road prematurely, like I need help. So of course they call 911, the ambulance comes, they take Darcy and the baby to the hospital. In Darcy's head, she's like, I got this. All I have to do is have them check out the baby, make sure the baby's okay, I'll tell them I'm fine, like I'll sign paperwork so they can clear me, I'll go see my OBGYN. You guys take care of the baby, release me, and I'll go to my OBGYN. Well, it doesn't work that way. When she came into the hospital, some of her story's not adding up, and at this point, simultaneously, Cindy's husband, Sam, is waiting for her to come home. Now it's three hours after she was supposed to be home. He starts panicking, 
she's not answering, so he calls the midwife. The midwife just so happens to be working at the hospital where Darcy came in with the baby. So she's like, no, I have not heard anything from Cindy, but like there was this weird situation with this woman who came in with this baby and it like there, it just didn't make sense that it was her baby. She had it on the side of the road and in her head, she's like something about these two cases, Cindy missing, Darcy showing up like this, like she correlated it, correlated it in her head. So she proceeds to tell the doctors like, you need to do an exam on Darcy. Darcy's refusing it. So they're speculating more. The OB that examined the baby was convinced. She's like, this does not look like a natural born baby. It looks like a C-section baby. The baby's named Amelia, by the way. So Amelia's head was just perfectly round, pretty little baby that you don't see on a baby that's delivered vaginally. That's why they have the soft spot for anybody that doesn't know. The skull bones cross over one another so they could fit through the birth canal. So C-section babies are born with these beautifully round little heads because they don't have to squeeze through the birth canal where vaginal babies are born with these cone heads. Back to that doctor, she was like, something's not right here. Like this is a beautiful round headed baby. Then piecing it together, the midwife knew something was wrong. They call the police. So once police start questioning Darcy, she changes her story. She panics, right? And she's like, no, that's not true. I didn't have the baby, but I don't want to get anybody else in trouble. I paid a midwife $10,000 to get me a baby. Like, so she bought herself a baby, supposedly. This is the baby, that's why I'm bringing it in. I didn't wanna get the midwife in trouble, so I created the story in the desert. And that's what investigators tell us later about Darcy. She could look at you in the eye and make up a lie. And when you call her on it, stone face, still looking you straight in the eye, she would just change her story in the spot, on the moment, on the spot, in the moment, she would just make up another bold-faced lie, staring you down, not even flinching. So that's what she's trying to do in this instance, and they knew something was up. That's when the police finally, I don't know who did this, it must have been a daddy or a mom, but they forced her to hold the baby in her arms. Something about having the baby up on her chest made her crack. She broke down, she confessed to the whole entire thing. The following day, she took police to where she dumped Cindy's body. Sam Ray, the baby's father, took her home and christened her baby Amelia. A little while later, his older son Luke and baby Amelia moved out to Southern California. There was a school teacher and despite the gruesome details about her birth story and what happened to her mother, Amelia went on to have a very joyful, happy, normal, as normal as she could have, childhood and Darcy was convicted of murder. The DA said that this was the most horrible and gruesome crime that he had prosecuted in the over 10 years at that point that he had been in that office. Darcy had all of these issues from her childhood and she genuinely believed having a baby and being a mother would fill whatever void that she had in her heart from feeling as if she was being abandoned from her mother. And then on top of it, as a woman, there are hormonal pressures that we place on ourselves, and pressures from society to become a mother. And I can only imagine how much worse it was in the mid 80s, when I think a lot of women were wrapped up in their identity, being becoming a mother, a stay-at-home mother. Things are different nowadays. And to this day, there's a ton of pressure placed on women to have a baby. I can't even imagine what it was like back then. But why did nobody call this woman out on her fake pregnancies? Why did nobody see that this was going so far off the rails and try to stop her or get her some help? Darcy serving a minimum of 30 years. And if she was 19 years old when this happened, that's the remainder of her childbearing years. So, I mean, there is that. Side note, I am so happy I didn't hear about these cases when I was pregnant because I'm already a paranoid person with a lot of anxiety and then you add hormones into the mix, my goodness. But if Darcy came up or anybody came up to me when I was pregnant and they were like, I'm having the worst day, can you just talk? I'd be like, I am so sorry, I'm running late for an, another appointment. I gotta go, like, good luck to you. I'm sorry you're having a bad day peace, and I think most of us would at this point, but like, so crazy how trusting people were in the 80s. I wanna know your thoughts on this case. Have you heard of other cases of women having babies cut out of their bellies? I mean, there are some major ones in the news. I just can't believe like this is even a thing. Normal civilians are giving people C-sections on the street, killing them and taking their babies. Like, it just blows my mind. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Please give this video a thumbs up. It just helps me out so much in YouTube. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.